hey, you've got this function, uh, XQ, f of x equals x cubed minus 48x squared. We want to determine the intervals on which f is both increasing and concave up. Uh, we'll look at the graph on board two, and I'll talk you through it. Okay, here's the graph. This red graph is the graph of the original function. And a little light green here, we've graphed the first derivative. And that first derivative is equal to 0 at 32 for x and at 0 for x. And you'll notice that to the left of 0, the green dashed line is positive. It's above the x-axis. That tells you that the slopes of the tangent lines are going uphill, which means that the original function is increasing to the left of 0. And to the right of 0, the little dashed green line here is below the x-axis. So it's negative all the way out to this 32, which means the tangent lines are going downhill. And that tells you that the original function is decreasing. And of course, to the right of 32, we're back above the x-axis. So tangent lines are positive and slope going uphill. And here's what your work might look like right here. This is called the first derivative test. So we find the first derivative, set it equal to 0. And these are called the critical numbers, 0 and 32. And we put those on a number line. And then <clears throat> 0 and 32 are the only numbers where the first derivative is equal to 0. Everywhere else, it's either positive or negative. So if we pick a number to the left of 0, like negative 1, picture putting it in here. Put a negative 1 in there for x. And you'll see that you got 3 times negative 1 is negative. Negative 1 minus 32 is negative. Negative times negative is positive. The first derivative is positive. That means the tangent lines are going uphill, which tells you that the original function is increasing. So to the left of 0, the original function is increasing. And similarly, between 0 and 32, pick any number you want. 1, 16, 27. Usually you pick something that's pretty easy to work with, like 1. If you put 1 in for x, you get positive times negative is negative. Tangent line's going downhill. The original function is decreasing. And there's the increasing. So I'll let you use interval notation to describe where that function is increasing. It's to the, you might say, from negative infinity to 0. It's increasing, joining from 32 to infinity. OK, for the concavity, this is the test for concavity right here. OK, we find the second derivative, set it equal to 0, and find out when the first der the second derivative is equal to, to 0 at x equals 16. That's this blue dashed line right here is the second derivative at 16, 0. Uh, the second derivative is, I'm sorry, it's x equals 16. The second derivative is equal to 0. Here's a little number line for the test for concavity. To the left of 16, 16 is the only place where the second derivative equals 0. To the left of 0, it's got to either be positive or negative. So pick a number like, I don't know, 0. Put it into the second derivative, you get a negative number. I like to think when the second derivative is negative, Think of a frown, okay? We're negative, we're frowning. To the right of 16, like putting in a 17 here or 20, we get a positive number. Think of a smiley face, concave up, okay? And that means since the concavity changed, that this x value produces a point of inflection. So there's a point of inflection right there. And so... We're concave down to the left of 16 and concave up to the right of 16. Notice that the tangent lines from negative infinity to 16 are decreasing in slope. Second derivative 
that means the tangent lines are decreasing in slope. They're going from positive to negative, and then all of a sudden, at 16, they start increasing in slope. Call that concave up. There you go. Hope that helped. If you have any questions, post a comment.